there's plenty of science out there to show us that the voluntary approach in many ways has failed. The Iowa's uh, nutrient reduction strategy, which was established in 2010, to achieve a 45% reduction in nutrients going down the river by, I think, 2025, clearly we're not making it, we're going backwards. My name is Tim Wagner. I'm Agriculture Outreach Coordinator for the Isaac Walton League. I am national staff working in Iowa and Illinois on a range of agricultural policies at both the federal and state level. And I also spend a fair amount of my time working in the soil health community. Uh, it seems to be a growing movement. One tablespoon of healthy soil contains more microorganisms than there are people on the planet. Those microorganisms need a lot of carbon, and they need water, and they need good soil structure in order to survive. And good soil structure comes from roots and good root structure. And that, that benefits the overall microorganisms health. When you increase organic matter, i.e. microorganisms in the soil, you increase dramatically the capacity for soil to do several things. One is to grow food, to grow plants. Two is to retain much more water than what we are currently doing under current farming practices. Three would be to be far less susceptible to soil erosion, whether it's wind and water erosion. It creates a model for the farmer where they can start to reduce their own inputs and reduce their costs and become more profitable and still produce good food. Basically four or five basic principles of improving soil health that the research is clearly showing us one is no-till. Get away from tilling the soil. There's kind of a common term out there that you're hearing a lot of called recreational tilling. That's probably one of the worst things we can do for the ability of the soil because you're disrupting the microbial activity, you're disrupting the earthworms that are very important healthy soil, and you're releasing a whole lot of carbon that should stay in the ground. Carbon is very important for plant growth, very important for soil health. And when you till it, you're releasing a lot of that carbon. Making sure that soil is covered 12 months out of the year. 12 months out of the year. That involves cover crops. So once the soil harvest is done, or the crop harvest is done, whether you're combining beans or combining corn or whatever crop you're growing, you come right back in and plant a new cover crop that's going to establish a root system and then it covers that, it grows actually throughout the winter months and, and actually protects that soil from the forces of, of winter weather and spring weather and the rains and so forth. It's reducing the amount of nitrogen you're using or even eliminate it altogether, that too can aid dramatically in soil health because research is clearly showing now that nitrogen actually can burn the soil, can actually burn the microbes, kill the microbes, and so we end up creating a system where your plants are depending on the synthetic fertilizer versus what should be in the soil itself to provide nutrients for that plant. The microbes are going to, going to, be, they're going to sustain much easier when you've got all kinds of microbial activity and good soil structure where uh, nitrogen, especially over application of nitrogen fertilizer, can do the opposite. Same thing goes with, with uh, severe applications of, or, or over applications of pesticides and herbicides. Do the same thing. They kill the very organisms in the soil that are necessary for uh, growing healthy soil. Buffer strips, you know, along creeks and drainages, protect the waterways, slow down the migration of nutrients into the water. Bioreactors, things like that are becoming very common practice. Um, monitoring water quality as it comes out the tile is also a very uh, good practice to start to develop because you, it's for the farmer it'd be an easy way to determine what's going on with the soil. Tiling in many ways can act as a direct conduit for those nitrates and phosphorus and other pollutants to go directly into the creeks, into our rivers, contaminating our underground water systems, contaminating wells, and eventually go down the Mississippi River and feed in the hypoxic zone in the Gulf. If that tiling is taking water away from the soil structure, that's water that your plants are going to need next summer. Right now, across the state on average in conventional corn and soybean rotation that we have where you have say 
28, 38, 30 inch rows of corn or soybeans with all that bare soil, you're probably getting a water infiltration rate of about a half an inch of rain per hour that actually penetrates the soil. So when we're seeing these episodic events, rain events, flood events associated with the change in climate, where we're getting four to five inches of rain in an hour or more in some cases, that's water that's running off the soil instead of going down. When you improve soil health, improve, improve organic matter, you can dramatically increase, re, increase that water infiltration rate upwards to six, seven, 12 inches of water per hour. That's water that's going down into the soil and feeding the nutrients, feeding the root structure, and staying in the soil at depths below that the plants are gonna need next summer when we're having hot and dry periods. If you're getting four or five inches of rain in an hour with conventional infiltration rates, that's water that's running off the top of the soil and taking the soil with it. Right now we're losing on average in Iowa about five tons per acre per year. And in some counties and in some events, we're seeing that go upwards of 40 to 50 tons per acre. What's a 10? What's a 10 inch uh, rain in in a matter of a few hours? Yeah. How much yeah. soil does that take down the river? Oh, it's 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 unbelievable what's happening. We're still having dramatic rates in soil loss. We're, that soil can take upwards of you know 100 years to form per inch. We're losing it at a much faster rate than we can replenish it. People like Jerry Hatfield, who's a USDA agronomist at, uh, up at Iowa State, will tell you at the current rate of soil loss, by the year 20, 2100, Iowa will be virtually a desert. We will not be able to grow food. In less than 50 years, 80% of Iowa will not have enough soil left to grow anything. That's because we're still losing that at an alarming rate. The NRCS and the USDA still consider five tons per acre as an acceptable amount of soil loss. Most agronomists like Jerry Hatfield and others around the country will tell you there is no acceptable amount of soil loss, none. We should be losing none, and we can do that. But there again, you gotta go to no-till, you gotta have the ground covered up you know, year round, and you got to develop root structure and using a range of cover crops and good crop diversity and also crop rotation and livestock rotation. You know, livestock is also one of those keys of developing soil health. Putting, putting cattle back on the ground and moving away from the big concentrated animal feeding operation model and putting livestock back on the ground the way this land was before we before we disturbed it because that's how biological matter increases in the soil okay so it can be rebuilt it can be rebuilt and it can actually be rebuilt very quick very quickly uh, mother nature is incredibly resilient you know most of the research will tell us that once the farmers goes to no-till and start using cover crops they can see dramatic increases in organic matter in two to three years by five years in that in that in that using those practices you can see dramatic increases in water infiltration organic matter uh, dramatic reduction in soil loss and better profitability we need to get away from from the focus on production and focus on profits in other words for for generation upon generation the only way we've been telling farmers the ability to survive is to increase bushels per acre. We need to get away from that model. The average farmer across the country is, is keeping uh, 18 to 19 cents of, dollar, of their dollar uh, for what they put into their operation. So for every dollar they spend, they're keeping about 18 to 19 cents. I have talked to farmers that have been practicing organic practices, including no-till, cover crops, diversity of crop rotation, seven or eight, six or seven or eight different crops and livestock production, they're seeing profit margins of upwards of 80 cents on the dollar. That's because they've dramatically reduced their inputs and they've increased soil productivity. You can still grow 200 bushel corn without all the high cost of inputs that, that farmers felt that they need to do. You can increase soil health and you can become more profitable and less dependent 
on you know farm subsidies, for example, less, less dependent on 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 the, the the discounts you get on premium for your crop insurance by making your farmland much more resilient, much more profitable. You're putting the practices back on the ground the way Mother Nature intended. Gabe Brown is one of the most well-known articulate spokesmen about this concept of soil health, a big farmer yeah, out in Bismarck, North Dakota, who farms about 5,000 acres. And he will tell you that Mother Nature is his best business partner. He uses Mother Nature as his best advisor. He pays attention to what Mother Nature tells him. It took him a long time to get to this point in, in, his, in his career, but now, I mean, he's, he's supporting himself and his wife and his son and his son's family with doing really, really well and not even dependent on the farm bill to farm because he's doing all these things that he figured out improve soil health. I mean, he, he showed me directly where he put up a test plot on his farm when he first started farming in the early 90s, conventional corn and soybeans. And he put up a test plot to monitor water infiltration. And we'd have these typical, you know, heavy rains that come through and he was getting about a half an inch of water infiltration per hour. After 25 years of putting all these different practices in place, he's getting upwards of 25 to 30 inches of water infiltration in one hour. That's a 60% or a 600% increase. There's a paradigm shift that has to happen um, in the farm community and in the general public as well to understand that we can have better food, higher quality food, and not be contaminating our waterways and we're more resilient for the future to what the future is going to bring. Climate change is the 900 pound gorilla in the room and it's creating a whole lot more uncertainty for the farming community than we had even 10 years ago. And these things of improving soil health will help them be much more resilient to these episodic rain events and, and, and other things that are going to come at us in terms of climate change. Heat, for example. You can go into a conventional corn and soybeans farm where you have bare soil between 30, 30 inches a row or 30 inches between two rows on a hot summer day, put a thermometer in that soil and you might get a reading of 120, 130 degrees or even higher. But if that soil has an annual cover crop and it's covered with residue, that soil temperature can be 20 to 30, 40 degrees less than that. That's going to benefit the microorganisms. The way it is now, you're basically baking and killing those microorganisms in the soil with so much heat. All these components come together to form a healthy soil component uh, or healthy soil regime that help increase profitability, dramatically reduce pollutants going into the watershed, and make the farming um, landscape much more resilient for the future. There's plenty of science out there to show us that the voluntary approach in many ways has failed. The Iowa's uh, nutrient reduction strategy, which was established in 2010, to achieve a 45% reduction in nutrients going down the river by, I think, 2025, Clearly, we're not making it, we're going backwards. It didn't put any protocols in place about how we get there, just that this is what our goal is going to be. It makes suggestions, but there's no teeth to it whatsoever. The farming community in general is very much opposed to any kind of regulation. But I would, I would flip that argument on its head and to say to, the, to Mr. Farmer out here, look, the things that could be regulated actually would help you become a better farmer and help you become more profitable and put money back in your pocket. You may not want someone telling you you have to put cover crops on your ground. Well, that's fine, okay, but go ahead and do it then anyway because in the end you're going to see the benefit to it. Just keeping the soil covered 12 months out of the year, you know, yeah, there's an initial cost up front, but in the end, you're going to benefit in the long run because you're protecting the very resource that your business model depends upon. You've got to help the farmer understand this isn't a regulation to put you out of business. This is a regulation to help you become more profitable. When you become more profitable, that helps the community, that helps the state, that helps the economy, okay? That helps people's public health, you know?
And so all these need to be part of the narrative. I grew up on a farm and I've seen so many changes and so we and we've gone through this iteration of changes and, and now we're into this even more so this industrial ag model that's so dependent on technology. Okay? And I hear phrases like precision ag and you know, and that, that's a good catchphrase for farmers who, you know, have a $300,000 tractor with this massive computer display in their tractor. But is that precision ag concept being utilized to just do more of the same? Or is it being utilized to improve soil health? And that's a big question. And, and I think every farmer needs to consider that.